Hello and welcome to this People's Health Alliance discussion on spiritual connections. I'm your host, Sarah Chave, and this evening I have with me a wonderful guest, Dr. Kaimi Filipovic, um, who is a doctor in acupuncture and the co-creator of a wonderful system called Acunect. So I'm just going to start off by letting Kaimi um, introduce himself. And, and um, Kaimi, it'd be amazing to hear a little bit about your background and the discussion today is about spiritual connections and how separation is the root of all disease. So it would be great to hear a little bit about, um, you know, anything that kind of puts you on your path of spiritual connection. Um, yeah, well, that's a big question, but I'll try to speak to it. So, uh, look, I've actually done a lot of different things in life. Um, and um, uh, had quite a few jobs when I was young, went to school for computer science, worked in that for a while and realized it wasn't, uh, although it was something I was good at, you know, that's what they always tell you in school. Well, think about what you're good at and, you know, go into that. It's like, well, uh, okay, that didn't help me. Um, but um, but I realized at some point that it wasn't for me. But But actually, you know, to speak to, my interest in the importance of spiritual connection. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if I've ever told you this before, Sarah, but when I was when I was um, about seven years old, I had a um, I didn't know what had the, the words for it, but what I would now call a prophetic vision is I had this idea that at some point in my life, and I saw myself being probably, you know, in my 40s or 50s or something like that, that I would be speaking to people about spiritual issues. And, you know, from the from the vantage point and experience level of a seven-year-old, I thought, oh, well, maybe that means I'm going to go into the ministry. I'll be a, a pastor or something like that. And, you know, but then at some point in my teens and where I started like reading more and thinking more for myself I I came to this conclusion that that the way I thought about God and about Jesus in my heart was different than what they were telling me on Sundays you know that there was just you know it's like wait what you're saying doesn't land in my heart about how it's supposed to be and so i kind of i actually fell away from from going to church at that point um probably by the time i was about 18 and then for years i thought well what was that <laughs> prophetic vision at seven about then right so but um you know then in my 20s um uh, I was working as a computer scientist, and but I had a family member who was really ill and went to a bunch of different doctors, couldn't get any answers uh, and no help, finally tried acupuncture. And this is back, you know, this is back in the early 80s. And I, I grew up in California. Acupuncture was only legalized in California in 1981 so you know we were definitely the first kids on the block to try this weird thing and it helped it worked and and um and so that fascinated me and after a while I decided I would study shiatsu the idea of changing careers and going to acupuncture school and becoming a physician that was just I was a little bit too big of a of a leap at that point. So I went to I went to Shiatsu school with the idea that, hey, you know what? Maybe I can learn a bit about these meridians, which was a totally foreign concept to me. And um and you know, kind of help to synergize with those acupuncture treatments. Then I found that I actually really loved working with people. I liked people way more than computers. And, and 
as I started to do my shiatsu training, you know, and I started to work on people, yeah, I was helping people with kind of the basic stuff you think of for massage, you know, like back pain and neck pain and stuff like that. But people were telling me that, you know, their their heart conditions were getting better. They their menstrual issues were getting better, that their digestion was getting better, their mood was changing, that they found happiness again in life. And I'm like, whoa, wait a minute, all I'm doing is like open up, opening up the flow of these meridians or whatever. Uh, I didn't honestly know at that time, I would have been in my like, um, I would have been about 30 at this point. And, and I didn't know what to make of it. But I was hooked and intrigued. And, you know, then I really started to study Chinese medicine. And I eventually, uh, then when I moved to Hawaii, one of the very first people I met was um, somebody who had trained in acupuncture with the, with the Japanese imperial physician. You know, once he retired, he trained a handful of students and and acupuncture and he became my mentor and I learned kind of like the old-fashioned way of doing acupuncture from him which they don't really teach in school anymore because schools are largely standardized on on what Beijing says is acupuncture and but you know in the in the um when the communists took over in whatever it was, 1949 or whatever, they rewrote all of the acupuncture books and they stripped out all of the spiritual aspects. And they also stripped out all the things where you could make people stronger and to nourish their destiny and to, you know, help them on their life path. All of that got stripped out. It was just like, no, if they've got a cold and they can't go to the factory, here's the kind of acupuncture you can do to clear the cold and get them back to work. No, no nurturing the spirit kind of thing. So I was really grateful to have studied with, you know, somebody who, who knew that tradition. And, and, you know, the longer I practiced, the more I realized that what really made people sick, and this is part of Chinese medicine, is that the emotions, when not properly handled and expressed and released, that's what distorts the meridians, which control the organs and control the nervous system. That's what causes disease, is emotional distress. And as I started to work with people, I realized, gosh, emotional distress, a lot of it comes from beliefs about how people see themselves and how they see themselves in connection to the world, to the universe, to God, whether or not they have any inherent value or whether or not they're never good enough. And, you know, it's like these, these are spiritual questions. That is what um, I actually did with people that helped. And I, you know, at some point, oh gosh, this is well over 20 years now, uh, ago now, I, I came across a, a passage in um, in the oldest book on Chinese medicine, the, the Yellow Emperor's classic of Chinese medicine from, what was it, like 2,400 years ago or something, and um, that the root of all disease is loss of original nature, which translates to no longer realizing that you're part of the Tao or all that is, in Western terms, we could translate that to separation from God. And, you, you know, and so <clears throat> that set me on um, uh, a journey of really understanding the connection between body, mind, and spirit, basically. So I don't know. I talked for a long time. I probably said too much. Thank so. you. No, that's amazing. Oh. Amazing introduction. Thank you, Kaimi. That gave an incredible overview. Um, so I'd like to pick up on some things that you said in terms of firstly that that mind body spirit connection um, and approaching it in terms of the world that we're living in now, you know, because we're living in a very stressful world where, you know, um, there's been experience of a lot of alienation for a lot of people. Um, 
you know, a lot of the models in our world, you know, such as the medical model, you know, it really kind of separates out that body, mind, spirit, and, and the spirit connection is really lost. I think the body, mind connection is becoming more known now, um, but, but spirit is really relegated. So I'm just interested to hear from you, you know, the impact that living in such toxic kind of environment has on us and how we can start to reclaim those different aspects of ourselves. Mm. Um, another big topic. Well, you know what? Uh, as I've studied the history of medicine, you know, there was a there was a time maybe 150 years ago when it was not yet dogma that um, that germs cause disease. There there was that theory from from Louis Pasteur, you know, um, who incidentally falsified much of his research or stole it from other people. He doesn't have very good scientific credentials. He was, however, an excellent salesman and was very good at politics. But um, there was another competing theory, which is it's not the germ, it's the terrain, which makes a lot more sense because no matter what the pathogen, no matter what the, the, the bacteria or the virus or whatever it is that's, that's causing disease for people, in any group of people exposed to that pathogen, some people get really sick and, you know, and that's sad, but other people are like, yeah, what's the problem? And if it was really just the germ, then you could, you could um, um, predict that everybody would get sick. And the fact that not everybody does means the idea that the germ is the actual cause is a hollow argument. However, in the especially around the turn of the last century, around the 1900s, um, um, business interests um, actually actually decided that, hey, there is huge profits to be made from medicine if we can switch to a drug model. And so it was it was investment by by people who weren't primarily doctors, who were primarily businessmen, that changed medicine to being more of a commercial endeavor, which is really sad because look, I know lots of doctors personally who if they got the medicine to help people and they're good honorable people, but they're working within a system that is um, um, driven by by corporate profit interest. And I think, you know, that's been that way, like I said, for, you know, um, at least 120 years. But the last few years have really accelerated that. Um, I mean, to anybody who's got a bit, any bit of an open mind, the 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 release of the COVID vaccines before any real testing was done uh, or even any real testing to show that it would at least prevent transmission and you know infection and retransmission and so on um, let alone like what are the long-term side effects um, with all kinds of lies that that um, you know that it was safe and effective and so on without any actual studies to that there's so many people now that even even people who used to be, oh yeah, I, I believe in science, I believe in you know medicine or whatever. There's so much out there now that look, you know what? They didn't have the studies, even you know the the release of of information from Pfizer is that they actually knew a lot of stuff that's come out since you know before they released it, and you know and it was still put out there, and I think that's really damaged. Um, people's faith in 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 medicine and 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 rightly so because um you know even even the editor of the lancet which is a premier medical journal says you know medical journals have just become a money laundering operation for 
for pharmaceutical companies is that virtually all of the studies printed in medical journals now are bad science bought and paid for by pharmaceutical companies and um and you know so it has damaged faith i think you asked like well what can we do about it um well the first thing is to take responsibility for our own health and not turn over power to to and i don't want to i want to choose my words carefully here it's not so much about turning power over to your doctor because your doctor is probably likely a very caring person who's really trying their best, although they may have not been fully educated in the right way. But they are bound in what they can do by corporate interests. And so, you know, instead of just blindly turning over our health to corporate interests, you know, we need to we need to empower ourselves. Um, um, and, you know, I, I love it that we're talking about spiritual connection because the Aconect healing system is a great healing system. I mean, it really works. And the amazing thing is, is that we can train people very, very quickly to get absolutely amazing results with it, even if they have no background in healthcare before that. Um, but for myself and, and, and my partner, Sarah Simonis, who is the co-creator of, of Acunate, our primary purpose of, of teaching Acunate is to actually give people an experience of spiritual connection, because the way we teach people to do healing with Acunate is to not practice from their ego and from their intellect and their and their ego it's to actually you know we teach them muscle checking and a very complete protocol of of what to ask about using the muscle checking to find out exactly where you can help this person in front of you not just apply oh this person has this condition i'll i'll do these things no it's to actually say to your intuition, you know, what should I do? Well, the intuition works because at a subconscious level, we all have access to information in collective consciousness. Thank God we don't have all that information at a conscious level. It would drive us mad if we were conscious of all the information in the universe. But we can actually get answers from collective consciousness about uh, about how to help somebody and then we do the 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 balancing which is really you know it's just saying hey brain could you take a fresh look at this i think maybe you got stressed and forgot about it and then we also tap over the heart to say hey heart which controls all of the acupuncture meridians by the way i think maybe you forgot about this and you know could you take a fresh look at it i think maybe you went into stress mode and kind of put this on the back burner and that is enough to heal almost everything if we can get people out of stress. Now, there's two things about that which feed the sense of spiritual connection. One, people get better without drugs, and that reaffirms your faith that, hey, maybe, maybe the design of the human body is pretty darn good if it can heal itself. That's really powerful to actually have an experience of 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 the body healing itself especially when it's something that the medical profession says nope either it's incurable or you got to take this drug for it there's no other way and then when you experience like oh my goodness that's better that's a sense of connection to something larger than yourself for the practitioners um i mean uh, i routinely hear stories from 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 practitioners that i've trained it's like they're amazed. Somebody came to see them with this condition. The condition's supposed to be incurable. I'm putting that in quotes because I don't think anybody should ever say incurable. Just because I don't know how to cure something doesn't mean it's incurable, right? So, but anyways, it's like, and then they tell me how what actually came up for balancing the session by by surrendering their ego and using the muscle checking was that 
it, it just went in this completely outside the box direction, which neither the practitioner or the, the client could make any sense of how that was the answer. But they had an immediate shift and, and it changed. And, you know, when you get answers that you couldn't figure out with your conscious mind that went to school, that actually seemed to make a difference, it starts to tell you, maybe I'm connected to something larger than myself. And look, you can go on YouTube and Google spiritual teachers, and there's no shortage of them. And you can listen to, you know, brilliant, inspiring lectures by amazing spiritual teachers all day long. But um, that's still not as powerful as having an experience of spiritual connection. And that's what we aim to provide. Um, um, and, you know, as it happens, uh, like we said before, loss of original nature or separation from God is actually the root cause of all disease. So if we can make the healing system actually provide not just a technical healing, but provide an experience of connection for both practitioner and client. Now both people are healing from, from doing the work. And that's a win-win to me. So how how's that? Did I answer your question? I, yeah, thank you, yeah. Kaimi. That was amazing. There's, there's so much I could pick up on there. Um, so where I'm going to go with this is I love what you said about the terrain and the germ theory. And, and you know, by really kind of working with that terrain theory, the self-responsibility and, and how we become empowered by, you know, realizing that if we can take responsibility for our, our terrain, you know, that can shift. Um, and I'm, I'm interested because, um, you know, the connection with the immune system and our sense of self, um, if you could talk a little bit about that and how um you know the alienation and the separation from source you know particularly if we, if we go back to the covid days you know lockdown and things like that and and how you know that can then relate to fear you know and the emotion of fear and um how that emotion of fear can then kind of further cut us off from source make us feel alone and create disease can you can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, um, let me see if I can weave that all together. Well, first off, I, I like what you said about self and non-self for the immune system because because you know at the simplest possible level of of looking at it, that is the job of the immune system is to decide, hey, is that cell or is that microbe, is it part of me or not part of me, and um, you know, and I'm including the microbes because, you know, as, as I think more people are aware of now, the, the human microbiome is actually very large, right? Then these are the microorganisms that are supposed to be living and thriving inside of us. So we have like 40 trillion cells, roughly, and we should have, if we're healthy, about 40 trillion bacteria and somewhere between 300 and 400 trillion viruses in our body that are part of our team. You know, the, the bacteria in the gut, the friendly ones, help us digest and get nutrients out of our food. The, the viruses, there's a whole class of them called bacteriophages, which actually they don't attack us, they attack bacteria. And it's a key line of how our immune system controls bacterial infections is not by targeting it directly, but just by encouraging these specialized viruses to be part of the team and help keep the body clean, right? So, so it's actually, I mean, the more you study the body, the more miraculous it seems. I don't know how anybody can seriously study the body long enough without it having them giving them some appreciation for divine creation at some level um because the idea that random chance um put all this together is just pretty random uh, actually so but so the the idea of of the immune system is to say 
is that part of me or not part of me? Should I, uh, should I embrace it or attack it? And okay, so that's that's easy. But what if the sense of self is out of balance? Now what happens? And maybe, maybe if the person thinks they aren't worth anything, they develop an autoimmune disease because they don't recognize themselves as being valuable. Or if they don't recognize in a different way, um, I've worked with lots of cancer patients and have largely had really good results where, um, you know, and in many cases, you know, people with stage four cancer where it's, you know, spread widely and who were told, mm, make your peace, right? And make your will, um, where, you know, I do acunic with them and it turns around and they become cancer free. I can't promise that, but it's amazing to see that it's possible. What I end up doing with them is I'm not trying to micromanage their immune system. I'm not delving into, you know, trying to direct these kinds of white blood cells and natural killer cells. I'm not trying to micromanage this amazing system. What usually comes up is beliefs around their self-worth. And I have not met um, a cancer patient yet who didn't really, really subscribe to the theory that... Um, it's better to give than receive rather than giving and receiving being equal. And so then they always feel like they have to give, give, give to others. And inherent in that is that I'm not worth receiving. And that's part of what disables their immune system. And, you know, I had this observation myself over working with a number of, of, of cancer patients, but uh, there's actually a lady who's training, um, doing the self-care training, instructor training now, who was a oncology nurse for 38 years before studying Akinek. And I told her that, and she just went, ah, ah, I just went through all the 38 years of cancer patients that I've seen, and that fits every single one of them, right? So this idea of addressing the person's sense of self if we want to actually heal physical disease like cancer just throwing toxic drugs at it like chemotherapy okay that i'm not speaking to the relative merits of that that does seem to help some people but if we stop there and don't work on their sense of self so that we can activate their immune system then we're we're really not um we're not helping them, at least not the way we should. You mentioned the idea of fear. Um, fear, this is the simplest way to look at it. Fear activates the fight or flight nervous system, the sympathetic nervous system. When that part of the nervous system is activated, digestion is minimized. Immune function is minimized. Because your body's philosophy is, is like, look, I don't know. Uh, the nervous system told us we're in alert mode. We're in emergency mode. There must be a tiger running after us. Everything is second, um, second level priority compared to running away from the tiger. And, so, and that includes the immune system. So anytime you experience fear for any reason, then... It distorts the nervous system and it takes energy away from, from the immune system. So I was so upset when the pandemic hit and they did the lockdowns because, well, A, fresh air is really good for people. Sunlight is really good for people. The studies I've seen, nobody died of COVID who wasn't severely deficient in vitamin D. And so now you want to keep people indoors and not getting any vitamin D. It didn't make any sense from that level. So, and the masks, you know, there's been literally 80 years of studies on masks and whether or not they stop respiratory viruses. And they don't. I know the Cochrane Review came out recently and, you know, that got a lot of press, but 
there's been 80 years of studies on this and they don't. So I was opposed on those levels. It's like, this doesn't actually make sense for helping people's immune system. But look, I am, I am, I'm primarily an acupuncturist and a body, mind, spirit healer person. I'm not, I, I'm not officially an expert in respiratory diseases and so on. Um, I am an expert on the body, mind, spirit connections. Anytime you make people afraid, oh, you can't go see your loved ones. You have to wear a mask everywhere. You have to you, you, you do all these things and, um, and, and avoid contact with everybody and stay you know, this far away from everybody. All of this stuff builds up in people's mind that, oh my goodness, this must be the worst, scariest virus ever. And just that fear shuts down the immune system. I, I mean, this is this is high school physiology that fear activates the fight or flight nervous system, and then that shuts down the immune function. It's it's not like you don't have to go to medical school to learn that. If you went to high school, you learned it basically. So, um, yeah, and and that was a, a really unfortunate um, consequence. That um, how much it added to people's misery and the death toll we can't we can't calculate but it did i'm sure so thank you kaimi um yeah I'm, I'm i'm really interested to hear some more about how our emotions can kind of cut us off from spirit particularly fear you know that and how that can then relate to to, to causing disease you know through that those mechanisms in the nervous system but also because we you know when we're in fear we we kind of shut down on a spiritual level as well mm. um, and also the other the other aspect that um i'd be interested to hear from you about is um our belief systems i know you touched upon it in terms of um viruses in our sense of self but in terms of um you know the belief systems around um perhaps feeling alone um feeling like we're not supported by the universe and how that can impact um, on our sense of self and our connection with all that is. Um, yeah, okay, so first off, um, I mean, fear is kind of the root emotion, and then that affects how we express the other ones. But uh, like, here's a simple way to look at it, is uh, again, from an acupuncture perspective, every emotion um, will influence a meridian. So for instance, both the, the liver and gallbladder meridian um, uh, regulate the emotion of anger and how, how we experience it, how we react to it, how we express it. If we, if we recognize anger quickly and then take an action to correct the situation, then that doesn't cause us any harm, but um, and uh, and just a quick example I sometimes use when I'm teaching people about this is that look you should experience a little bit of anger whenever something's not meeting your needs. The idea is to act on it when it's a little bit of anger. So here's an example. Um, you know, let's say. Let's say I came over to your house, Sarah, for dinner, and and you served a lovely meal. But oh, you know what? I kind of like a lot more salt than pe other people do, just as an example or whatever. And but the salt shaker is down the other end of the table by you. Well, if I taste the food and it's not quite salty enough to my taste, I mean, you're a nice person. That's why the salt shaker is on the table, right? And so. It, we consider it socially acceptable for me to say, um, oh, Sarah, could you pass the salt, please? And, and, and that was my reaction to the anger that I didn't have the right amount of salt, is I quickly recognized the situation, and I turned it into a, a moment of social connection. And then, and then you got to say, oh, oh, yeah, of course, Kaimi. And then we had this little, little, you know, giving and receiving thing between friends, and it's, actually re establishes better social connection. So, but if I thought that it was um, unacceptable 
to ask for it. I should just suffer and eat the food the way it is or whatever, you know, and I'm stewing there. It's like, God, I told Sarah before that I like salt. Why doesn't she just pass the GD salt? <laughs> Why so? And, you know, now that is harming me. That's distorting the energy in the liver and the gallbladder meridian. And then the function of those organs is going to suffer physically at some point. And so, um, and, you know, uh, you might think it's only bigger things that, um, you know, like, oh, you know, it's not the salt. It's like something going on in your, in, in at work or whatever, you know, and it's a tricky thing because it's your boss or whatever. and You don't know how to assert your boundary. Okay, that's a big thing. We can understand the lack of courage to speak up and express your anger. But I actually was using that as example about passing the salt with a client who was really trying to, I was getting beliefs around expressing anger and, you know, that it is possible to do it well. And I told him that little story. And I said, oh, claim me, I, yeah, I don't think I could ask for the salt. That'd be like too much. So, I think that'd be rude, right? So, okay, well, you know what? This, this fellow is a lovely guy. I mean, he is the nicest guy. Maybe just a little too nice because he also has terrible, terrible inflammatory conditions. And that's what I'm trying to help him with. So I don't think it's an accident that he has this belief that it's not okay to express anger in any way, shape, or form that is contributing to the distortion of his immune system. So, and, you know, uh, the same thing goes with other, I mentioned the better to give than receive kind of thing. That leads to worrying about others and that distortion of worry distorts the spleen in the stomach and it's the spleen that gives energy to the immune system if the spleen meridian thinks everybody else's needs are more important than yours then it sends your worry energy outward and it doesn't actually worry about keeping your body clean and so you know uh, that's kind of the idea with how the how the beliefs affect the emotions and then actually affect the physical body i could go on but that's in a, in a nutshell so thank you and and you mentioned the you know that that lovely example of you know asking for what you need and my understanding is that that is part of the spiritual connection aspect of it as well because mm -hmm. it's that coming into our authentic self and and how how by making a connection with our with our needs coming out of fear coming from the heart that we start to to make much more of a spiritual connection is there anything else that you'd like to add to that Kaimi? um yeah look this your question just stimulated the thought that i haven't really worked through before so i hope this comes out um sensible but this idea of asking for what you need means you have to think you're worth asking and so underneath that is a fear that you're not and in in Taoism fear serves to on the one level you know fear is what makes us look both ways before we cross the street and so acknowledging fear helps to preserve life but if we indulge fear then we don't go out and experience life and the and the virtue of fear in Taoism is wisdom that we need to honor our fear enough to not lose our life by doing something stupid but not cave into the fear that life is dangerous and hence that the world is dangerous and actually venture out into the world and try things and and you know it's as we explore the world that we gain life experience and we gain wisdom but then but as we feel like there's more and more areas of life that we can navigate then we feel more at home in the world 
and we feel more accepting of the world and of ourselves. And that leads to um, a, a more felt sense of, you know what? Maybe the world's a pretty good place. And, you know, thank you for giving me life and creating this beautiful world we're on. But if you withdraw from the world, because you you can't ask, um, you know, for the courage to go out and do something, then you never gain that experience of actually really fully experiencing the world. And that's how we gain appreciation for ourselves and our abilities in the world is by trying things and and um, and embracing life. So beautiful. Thank you. Shall we open up for um, Q&A now? Does anyone have any questions that they'd like to ask? Um, you're welcome to, um, you know, raise your hand or, or um, you know, do it manually if you like, because I can actually see everybody or, or, or um, pop something in the chat. Does anything been triggered for people with um, the things that, any questions with the things that Kaim has been talking about? So I'm just going to ask another question, just maybe while people are thinking about if there's anything else to be asked, Kaimi. I'd love to, um, you know, talk about how the work that you do helps us to connect with our spirit, um, with our authentic self, and with other people. Mm. You know, because part of, you know, where I started with this idea of um, how we've become detached, you know, from nature. We're living in a technological world increasingly. Um, and we become increasingly alienated. How does the work that you do help to kind of restore all those connections? Um, okay, so, well, trying to figure out where to begin. F first off, um, you know, I mentioned my partner, Sarah Simonis. Um, you know, we created Acunect together. And I think part of the beauty of that is uh, that it, embraces both the masculine and the feminine. I I think I have a pretty decent feminine side for a big strong guy, but but I also have a very uh, strong intellectual mind and that's like the masculine. I you know, I was a computer scientist and so on. Um um that um uh, I I bring that to that. Sarah um brings the feminine energy and and it's not just like the energy of us coming together but it's like the decisions we made in how to teach acunect and how to how to present it how to structure the courses and everything we've got that blend of masculine and feminine going through there and then right at the time you know sarah and i have been talking about that we felt like we needed to um to create a new healing system that better represented uh, the way that we practiced. Um, and we talked a little bit about what it would look like. And then in the same week, we both had a, a vision of what we now call the Acunect Health Map, which is, you know, all the different systems of the body, some of them energetic or, you know, um, more mental and spiritual and some of them quite physical and everything, but all the different systems that need to be working in balance for, for health. Uh, and that's what we use in, in, along with the muscle checking. We both got that like as a download and we compared our notes and said, hmm, you know, maybe we're supposed to work together on this. And so that was, that was an interesting thing. Um, but then in that same week, Sarah had a vision while we were doing a, a joint healing session on somebody. She had a vision. She got another visual download. And it was um, of a kind of mandala that, um, that that's just as she as she visualized it and brought the energy in, we could just both feel it. It was really powerful. And you know, the experience of it is hard to describe. Now, Sarah, Sarah's been a meditator for a long time, and she's, um, um, uh, you know, 
been to a place of deep meditation where you know she really feels that connection to all that is and everything like that i've never been that patient to meditate that much to get to that level nonetheless when sarah had this vision it kind of carried me along for the ride and i had this experience of oh my goodness we <laughs> there really is only one you know um and um and so that that experience we found a way to include that in the training and so in the first uh, in the first um uh, uh class in the aconect healing system the the aconect connect course which we call it connect because we want people to connect back to their original nature that's the that's the 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 role of it we call it a remembering but for people to experience remembering that we are actually all connected and to each other to god to to the universe um and we do that right up front and that brings people into their heart and then we teach people all of the actual techniques from that place and so it really helps people get out of the you know the um uh, ego-based uh, um, practice of of the work right from the beginning there and then as we go through the curriculum um, we have I believe the most well-developed uh, body mind psychology reference materials in the world and so whatever people get to there's a way to find out hey what is that you know what what aspect of of mind are we balancing with the liver or with the pancreas or with this part of the nervous system and you know to really not just balance the physiology but to see um you know the body mind spirit connections woven throughout the whole uh, system basically so beautiful thank you kaimi we've had a few questions come in in the chat yeah um so the first is a question about the masks um so there's a view that masks don't work, but what about the placebo effect that wearing a face covering, sorry, something's in front, I'm just can't quite see that, covering can help someone who would otherwise be fearful about going out into the shops without one. Right, so, okay. Um, yeah, no, the, the masks don't work. A placebo effect can have an effect. I understand that for some people, it makes them more comfortable. Um, um, it, it's not good for them on other levels because it, it, it actually traps pathogens next to your mouth and your nose and it recirculates them. Um, it, it limits your breathing and so on. I don't think it's good physiologically for people, um, but look, I, I, I accept that for some people, if they're afraid that it helps them feel like it's safer to go out and um and so um you know and i would never directly criticize anybody for doing that you know i i want to have compassion for people who have fear what i wish is that the authorities didn't make it such a big deal to put that fear into people and to put the idea into people that oh you're not safe if you don't go out there. Uh, I think the authorities should have known better than to put that message out there. But for the individuals who feel afraid, like you do what you got to do to to get through. And I, you know, I have total compassion for that. So, yeah. So the next question is about people receiving Acunect. Um, does the recipient have um, physiological experience? Does it go on deeper levels in the subconscious mind? Uh, yeah, you know what? Uh, my experience is that compared to all other work that I've done, and even that all of our students do, uh, have done in the past, people really feel the the, the energy shifts with Acunect. Um, you know, they were like, oh my goodness, oh, my shoulders just let go. Didn't even realize I was holding them. Or like, oh, my breathing opened up. Or, oh, I just feel so much calmer. People really do, 
uh, often feel a physiological experience. That said, some people are more sensitive than others. Some people are less sensitive than others. I do have people who they don't really notice anything during the, the Akinex session, but when they come back, you know, they're better on lots of levels. So um, I, I would say most of the time people actually feel some kind of physical change with the, with the balancing. Uh, and some people, um, it's less obvious to them, but the, it still processes through and they get better, you know, as time goes on. So um, then somebody asks, how would I define spirit? And, and then it continues, and mind for that matter, as in body, mind, spirit. Yeah. Um, uh, these are definitions that people, you know, can 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 have different views on. But what I would say is, um, when I use the word spirit, I I use it in the sense of sense of self you know your personality your your ideas about who you are and um and so um you know there's a there's a saying in Taoism, which is kind of explains everything about medicine in 25 words which is that the blood follows the chi and the blood is the physical stuff of the body that nourishes every tissue, right? So that defines the physical layer. The blood follows the chi. The chi follow the thoughts. The thoughts follow the spirit. And the spirit follows the Tao. And so the spirit would be your sense of self. And if you feel connected to God or connected to all that is or to the Tao, then that's going to create peace in your sense of self. That's going to create more peaceful thoughts, less fight or flight response. And then the distribution of, of energy in the body, which includes, you know, chi and the meridians, but also nervous system energy, is going to be more balanced and you're not going to spend so much time in fight or flight. And then the blood will, will, nourish all the appropriate areas uh, appropriately so um you know uh, that's how i define it so then um in the in the phrase body mind and spirit i would say body is you know the body the mind is our thoughts but you know we can there there is a a level of of well what are you thinking about right now that doesn't necessarily equate to your overall sense of who you are and your place in the world. That overall sense of who you are will influence the kind of thoughts you have, but you know you may have many thoughts that that don't really um, uh, necessarily equate to your sense of self. So I don't know. Does that help, Karina? So okay. Any other? Any other questions or comments, feel free to unmute yourself or raise your hand if you'd like to ask anything before we close up this evening. Um, you know what, while people are maybe thinking of other questions, um, uh, I would like to say, you know, in terms of people finding out more about uh, Acunect, they can go to acunect.com, that's A-C-C-U-N-E-C-T uh, dot com. And Look, there's something I'd love to invite people to, which is this Saturday. So in, uh, what is that, three days time, uh, starting at 6 p.m. London time, um, I will be doing a, um, uh, what we call an Acunect community call. And I'm going to be doing, you know, more of, of an introduction to Acunect. And I'm really, I'm calling this one, you know, spirituality and healing with Acunect. As because of this whole idea that we've been talking about is that spiritual connection is essential to good health and that, that it is woven through the whole academic system. So I'm going to be doing a, you know, a bit of a presentation on that and how that really works. And then 
I'm going to be doing a an Acunect healing session um, uh, for the group on that, which um, uh, the group sessions people find uh, really powerful, even though they're you know they're not directly for you. Uh, look, at the end of the day, we're all human. We all struggle with the same five emotions and how to express them and react to them. And, you, you know, they typically really speak to that. So, and, and so what I've done is on the homepage for aconnect.com, uh, up at the top, I've got a little sign up link for that community call. Um, and um, I mean, I can show people the webpage if you give me permission to share it, Sarah. I don't know. Um, yeah. Okay. Let me just see if I can do that. Okay. So, all right. So, uh, so this is uh, acunec.com. That's how you spell it up there at the top there. And then I've just got a button, you know, here it is. It's, you know, 6 p.m. London, 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. Uh, there'll be a healing um, session uh, at the end of it. And then there's a button there, reserve my spot. Now, what we've done is um, uh, just from past experience, we got limited space for the calls. So we always, we charge a tiny amount to make sure that, you know, people don't reserve a spot and then they're not coming basically, right? So, so if you click that, it takes you to... Um, Oh, I, I, I should just say one, um, but um, uh, $2, that's what we're asking. You get a healing session for it and uh, you can pay with a credit card or PayPal. Um, but, you know, then that will automatically put you on the list and you'll get the Zoom link and everything like that. So so just go to acunec.com, click that, all right? So just, just so people can see where to go with that. So... Um, yeah, but that'll be a, it'd be a good call. It'll be high energy um, for the session. And I think, gosh, if, if you were attracted to coming to this call based on the title, uh, you'll enjoy that call and, and have a nice healing session out of it as well. So, Amazing. Thank you, Kayumi. Were there any, any last questions from anybody? Kayumi, did you have anything else that you wanted to, to close with? Anything that you feel you haven't been able to say? around the connections between that like, connect and spirituality or or good health and spirituality uh you know what this is what's coming into my mind right now is um because because we started off talking about you know that 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 people have um many people have lost an experience of faith um, and I think that's for a, a lot of reasons, but uh, I think pursuing, doing healing work, especially the way we do healing work, because it's designed from the square one to be about like really establishing this connection. I think it's an excellent spiritual path is to, to do this. And, um, and it made me think of a particular experience that happened to me some years ago. Um, and I was asked to come and do a healing session on this young lady who was, um, um, had terminal leukemia. Um, and, uh, I mean, she was, you know, in hospice care basically, but, but she'd heard about me and my work and she wanted to experience it. And, you know, and I said, sure. And so I, I showed up to where she was being cared for and um, and I had no idea she was that close. They expected her to pass that evening and and um, um, but she still you know wanted to see me. And you know, I mean, I did what I do with the muscle checking and the tapping and so on. but it was just kind of the most amazing session that I'd done because there was so much coming through that was so obviously not from my intellect or my ability. Um, 
and then I got to the end of the session, right? So any more to balance? No. Okay. All right. So I'm like, okay, well, am I supposed to come back? Yes. All right. Um, should I come back? I don't know. Tomorrow? Yes. Okay. About the same time. And I did go back tomorrow. And and then I did I did a little bit of balancing. And then I got, okay, is there anything else on the on the health map that I can balance? No. Uh, am I am I done? No. I sat there for a little bit and then I and then I, I got a vision of just putting my hands on her and focusing on my feet. Um, um, I've both naturally and through Qigong, I've developed a pretty good ability to focus on my earth connection through kidney one and the sole of the foot. And I just got an image, okay, can we touch her, focus on kidney one. And okay, that's what I'm supposed to do. Yes, I did that. And um, I've never been um, uh, trained in Reiki, but I've had Reiki, and I, I know what that feels like. Um, if the flow of energy with Reiki is a garden hose, this was a fire hose. I felt this just amazing amount of energy coming up. It wasn't my energy. It was coming from the earth, through me, out my hands, into her. And... Um, um yeah, gosh who knows what it actually means but it was staggeringly obvious that i didn't do that you know it just staggeringly obvious and um that was a um deeper and bigger spiritual experience than i could ever imagine having in church when i used to go to church and um gave me a deep appreciation um for uh a yeah we really are all connected thank god and but b you know to never to never say never and so now look you know it was an amazing experience and to me, it's not lessened at all by the fact that she did um, she did pass about 24 hours after that. But there's a principle in Chinese medicine that an energy treatment isn't complete until it's circulated through all the meridians in sequence, and that takes 24 hours. And so she lived exactly 24 hours after that uh, experience. And everybody who is with her said that she um, um, came to a place of absolute peace and enlightenment before she passed. So I still think it was the most amazing session I've ever done. Um, but part of it was, you know, that that um, it was just so staggeringly obvious that uh, I was I was useful in that situation but i was not the prime driver of it and i've had many 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 experiences of just awe of like oh my goodness i'm so grateful that for this ability and a system to be able to turn to turn my ego over and allow the universe or god to use me to facilitate this healing process and and to witness things that are that are just beyond my capacity. And look, I'm a pretty smart guy and I've been top of my class in everything I've ever studied, but I'm not smart enough to do the things I do in my practice. Uh, nobody is, right? So I get to witness that on a on a on a on a daily basis. So um so yeah, it's um uh, it's a way to experience grace on a regular basis. And that's that's what I love about it, and um, um, yeah. If that if that story is intriguing, come see me Saturday night. Oh, we'll talk more and answer more questions. So, 
Thank you so much, Kaimi, for all your insights. It's been really wonderful. And I love that idea of, you know, watching miracles being our, our profession. You know, mm. it, it really, it really is that. Um, thank you everybody for coming along this evening. I hope that you've all enjoyed as much as I have. And I think, I think oh, hold on, there's question. one last yeah. question come in. Sarah, would you like to unmute yourself? Hello. <laughs> Hiya. Um, I won't be able to attend on Saturday, uh, unfortunately, but it sounds really interesting. Sorry, I'm a bit shy. I get a bit emotional. Right. Um, It'll be recorded. It sounds um, really interesting what you do. I've had a, just had a quick look at your site. Um, I think maybe I was meant to come across um, this session. Um, right. It's just you could tell me a little bit more about it. Um, it's like how you what you do with the healing and how you connect spiritually and how you combine the two. Um, I'm sure you'd say that a bit more on Saturday, you know, in the session. Of... Yeah, you know what? Um, um, that, I I'm love to talk about it, um, but to, to give a full answer there, to take a little bit, what I would say is go ahead and sign up for the call, even though you're not available on Saturday. I will send out the replay. I'll record it and send out the replay probably later Saturday night or for sure Sunday morning first thing. Um, and, um, um, and you know, look, uh, you come to that and ask questions and you can, um, uh, you know, email us. You'll, you'll, have, you'll have the office at futuremedicinetoday.com email when you sign up and just email and, you know, we're happy to schedule a, uh, just a preliminary consultation with you afterwards to to talk about it and uh, answer all your questions that the that the that the webinar on Saturday doesn't answer and and uh, I'd love for you to move forward with it. So, yeah. Great, that's a great idea. Thank you. I okay. didn't realize you could uh, hear it afterwards. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. So thanks. All right, many blessings, everyone. Thank you so much for coming along this evening. I hope that you've all enjoyed and um, we'll see you next time. Actually, Kaim is talking again on, um, well, we're recording on Friday. It will be released next week about sleep. Um, so there'll be another opportunity. Watch out for the, the sleep round table. Um, it will be a panel of speakers, but Kaim will be talking then as well. So um, Many blessings, everyone. Right. Good night. Sarah, Bye for thank now. you much, so much for organizing this and many blessings. So you're so welcome. Bye for now. Right. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye.